of time watching the sky change colour. <laughs> This is me and when I see nature, I'm just looking at this seed pod and it's a solid form but the light's catching the edge that's making it have a white outline and that's the sort of thing when I'm out walking that I, so it might be out walking the dog often because I'm out walking the dog or it might be in your own garden. I bring that idea back to the studio for a later day. I think that's when I started to be realising how much landscape informed my practice when we started travelling. Because I think then I started to realise how much that affected my whole being, you know, looking at the world around me. Um, but then once I was starting to have a baby, we have to start thinking about security again. So we couldn't afford, even then, the prices, we had quite a good amounts put down and everything but the prices started escalating and we couldn't really afford what we were looking for here so we took a chance on moving to Denmark and I was a little bit depressed about my situation there because I was just with the children and it was all very well but I wasn't really expressing my creative side there. It was then that I, um, I did meet somebody, her name was Pia and she said oh you definitely need to get your hands in the glass again and she encouraged me to do so. So I I, um, we packed up and came back to the UK and she actually brought me this book about glass uh, making before we left with the message in it that I had to promise that when I got back to the UK I would take it up again, which I did. And here's one that I've got in the kiln that I'm making at the moment. Oh, we've got iridescence going on in this one. I like this iridescence business. It's metallics in the in the firing. Well, it's metallics in the in the paint that's on there and gives it a, gives it luster. So when it's down, you don't see it, but when you lift it, you get it picks up the luster. I can visualize the colors. Um, you, when you're working in enamels and you're working in in fritz and things. Often what you see in the can or see in the bottle, you know, when you, when you paint with it, it's not coming out. You need to n remember how that colour changes once it's fired, because you're not working with what you have on your palette, you're working with how it becomes. And I like those changes, I like the magic that that does as well sometimes. Yeah. I think part of what keeps me going with the glass is that the magic of the the unexpected. Stacked up against the old garden shed there, they just look like a bit of rubbish. Mm. But it's only when the sun catches them, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. that's not what I thought it was. That's Because I'd made these things, I didn't know what to do with them, but they look like just a bit of old corrugated roof. Here's your corrugated, so I make this sort of mix to cast on. There's an old shepherd's hut that's collapsing. It inspired me to make the cast and then bent it because it needs to be a bit curved. There's silver stain in, in them. And when the water runs off the edge, if you catch the sun and the water running off at the same time, it makes the water look gold. It sort of gives it a gold you see the sort of glints in there. Well, it does that to the water when it runs off the edge as well. Like I'm often working with that, that iridescence where it, 
changes as the light catches it and particularly with the copper and the gold it goes from the red to the green it's the copper gold the, the silver stain uh, which is a gold and the copper colors but they, they do change yeah you catch the light I find um, an attractiveness in this sort of ugly as well if you know what I mean yeah in a way that's gone iridescent because maybe maybe something's been here like um, hedge trimmers or something from leaked its oil that's not a good thing but that's what I do um, playing gives you the ideas for the next step in the next project <laughs> tree bark kind of thing going on here. You've got the texture in behind and the colours in the front. So I like to use enamels in conjunction with the fritz and I like to build up my colours and build up my surfaces and textures. So it's like it's more about my it's more um, painting my own picture than colouring in a ready-made format. I paint it and then I take it off. But that goes back to my decorating days. I started to do some courses in decorative decorating at the local Brunel Tech College. And with all the uh, decorators that were having a refresher course in their decorating skills. And found I had a knack for working with the paint. And When you're doing paint effects you learn how to do wood graining. And I did um, some serious wood graining. <laughs> I'm painting something to look like mahogany and look like oak. You could make these up, could you? Look at the pattern, the texture on that tree over there. I quite like it when it's wet as well, because when it's wet it's a different colour again. You can see those little sketchy lines, lines in there. You get to see it more so with sometimes when the trees are wet. You know with the weather we've had, rain and the storms and the rain and more hot sun, but all these different colours that show themselves and unshow themselves and that's like when you're walking around the forest, when the trees are wet or dry they change. This is my wet, wet dry thing going on, wet dry, yeah, rain or shine.